Welcome to our fifth video in the overview of ARC 331 and 332. We're going to talk about an auxiliary design focus, which is daylighting. Daylighting is a shorthand for admitting natural light to the interior of the building for purposes of illuminating the building interior and allowing us to turn off electric lights, thereby reducing the lighting electricity consumption. We introduced this auxiliary focus because every one of our, our uh, courses is supposed to have a sustainability focus. And this is a logical one to incorporate in the structures classes particularly since the introduction of these daylighting apertures potentially has a huge impact on the structural behavior of the building. Um, but it's also appropriate because daylighting is a natural part of almost all really wonderful architecture. So in this course, we're going to have nine videos that talk about um, lighting behavior in terms of solar angles and intensity and what the implications are in terms of aperture orientation, aperture area, and the spacing of the apertures in the building. So to start that whole process, we'll talk about the motion of the earth around the sun, uh, the rotation of the earth about its own axis, and what those geometric issues imply in terms of the sun angles that we observe on earth. So. For example, here we have a polar view of the Earth, and here we have an equatorial view of the Earth. And over a 24-hour period, we have a set of needles that represent sun angles during the summertime. These represent sun angles during the wintertime, and these during the equinox. What we see of that is what we're able to see above the horizon plane of the earth, which is represented by this gray plane right here and that gray plane right there. So we can take these sun angles that we can see right here and we can interpret them relative to architecture. So for example, in a very simplistic way here, we have a building with some walls and a horizontal aperture in the roof. Um, and what we see here are the summer sun angles, which go for a very long day, and the winter sun angles, which go for a shorter day, and the winter sun angles are less direct on this aperture. So here we have fierce overhead summer sun, and summer sun for many more hours than during the winter time. So one of the things we're gonna present and as part of these daylighting videos is data that talks about the collection characteristics of various apertures. So for example, this is a horizontal surface. We're looking at the illuminance that's incident on it. Here we have data for the entire month of June. Here we have data for December. What we see is the day is a lot longer uh, during the summertime and much shorter during the wintertime. Also on this horizontal surface, the angle of incident is much higher, so we get extremely intense beam sunlight uh, on a June day, much less intense light on a December day. Um, there's about 2.8 times as much light and heat incident on the aperture in the month of June than in the month of December. This is the exact opposite of what we want from a thermal point of view. We don't want an aperture that's going to make our building hotter in the summertime and colder during the wintertime. And this is an example of what's, what such a building could be. Uh, in this case, it's a greenhouse, which makes it one huge horizontal aperture. Um, this particular restaurant is quite beautiful, and it's in a scenic location, but it's almost unbearable on a summer day. 
the beam sunlight is really fierce. The HVAC system drones on to the point that it's almost impossible to have a conversation. And then there's another really ironic thing, which is if the air temperature is low enough that you're thermally comfortable when the beam sunlight is there on a June day, then when a cloud comes over, all of a sudden you're very cold in June in this space because the beam sunlight, which was part of the thermal balance on your body, has gone away. So generally speaking, we're not going to like horizontal apertures very much, which we typically call those skylights. We also don't like uh, tilted north-facing apertures. So that's what this is depicting here. So here we have a building with a sloping south surface and a sloping north surface. And these needles here represent the sun angles on that north-facing aperture. And what you see is on that north-facing aperture, there's beam, beam sunlight from the moment the sun comes up early in the morning until it sets late in the afternoon. And pretty much all day long, there are pretty uh, significant uh, solar uh, input to this north-facing aperture. On the other hand, during the wintertime, absolutely none of this beam sunlight actually gets over to that north aperture because it is blocked by the south sloping surface and by the east wall and by the west wall. So this is the solar data or the, um, I should say, the daylighting data for that tilted north facing aperture. We get in the month of June, lots of beam sunlight. In the month of December, we get none whatsoever. This is sort of typical sky. These outlying points represent times when there's some huge bright white cloud in the northern sky. But this dense set of data points here represents sort of the typical condition during the wintertime. It's not terribly bright. Uh, it's not doing anything to offset the heating loads of the building. But then during the summertime, when we have to cool the building, we have this fierce input of uh, light and heat. So, as I said before, this is the exact opposite of what we want in an aperture where it makes us hotter during the summertime and colder during the wintertime. And here's an example of a building that was built that way. Here we have tilted north-facing glass, opaque uh, south-facing and then, of course, we also have a huge amount of west-facing glass here, which is also disastrous because it collects a lot more light and heat during the summertime than during the wintertime. We're going to show a lot of videos that talk at length about solar behavior, daylight behavior, various uh, excellent examples of daylighting design. And from that, we're going to come up with some simplified daylighting guidelines for roof aperture systems. And we're going to discover that the best orientations are either north facing, and typically if we put the glass facing north, we can put photovoltaics on the south sloping surface. So the photovoltaics, which really want the beam sunlight, can get it, and the north facing glass, where we want a nice, well behaved, glare free light, um, we will get that through the north facing glass. We can also do pretty well with south-facing glass with an overhang, assuming that there are diffusing elements which can intercept the beam sunlight and scatter it around the space so that we minimize glare. And finally, the combination of north-facing glass in combination with south-facing glass protected somewhat with an overhang also works very well also. Um, we'll go through a whole series of examples that look at the issue of what should the spacing of the apertures be, and we'll generate various kinds of geometric constructs that help designers figure out uh, what sort of spacing that they need for the roof apertures. And we'll come up with additional simplified guidelines for roof apertures. For example, the area of the glass or the glazing should be 15 to 20 percent of the floor area being illuminated and the aperture spacing should be 1.3 times the height of the daylight glazing above the work plane 
and in a typical office space or library where we're working on a tabletop, we'll take that work plane as being two and a half feet off the floor. Um, there are examples of spaces where the task is very different from a library or an office. In a library or an office, there's a sort of hypothetical surface down here that represents the tabletop or desktop. Uh, in this case, it's a gymnasium, and the task is not a paper task on the desk. It's the following the flight of a basketball. So this space has to be bright all through the volume. So in this case, you'll notice the height up to the top of this glazing is much more than the spacing between the glazing uh, elements. And that is due to the fact that we would like to keep the entire volume of the space beautifully illuminated. So that ends our fifth video on overview talking about auxiliary design focus on daylighting.